everyone and welcome to Devils United for a match day vlog and we're here at Camp Nou uh, we've got one of the best seats um, according to the website Chloe how excited are you for the game our first international game as well yeah definitely I'm so excited for this it's been my dream to come and watch Barcelona for a long time and look at just look at the view we've got just just look at that lot of view and yeah can't wait for it fantastic and yeah like Maisie said our first international game that isn't United and uh, yeah what a view what a game can't wait bring it on yeah how are you expecting this game to go because um, it's going to be an interesting one I know at, at times uh, Barcelona has bat battered Getafe um, in the past but there's no Robert Lewandowski in the squad due to a suspension um, so we're probably most likely going to see the likes of Gavi more further forward yeah, I think it's still going to be the same. I think we're still going to dominate possession. Mm. But um, it's going to be hard in terms of in terms of shooting. We've not got that top goal school. We've not got Lewandowski. Yeah. Um, but still, we've got Gavin, we've got Pedri, we've got Dembele, we've got Frankie de Jong. Yeah. We've got many talent, many players. Mm -hmm. And it's just going to be a great game to see. We're, depending on the score, hopefully, it's going to be a great score. Hopefully, we're going to see many goals. Because we don't just come here for a draw and no goals. We come here for goals and a win for Barcelona. I'm going to go for a 3 0 win. What are you going for? 4 0. Ooh, love it. And we'll get keep you updated with this vlog. Enjoy it, everyone.
five minutes in the game, one nil for Barcelona. Goal scored by Pedre, um, and it was a stunning cross by Rafinha. What a goal! What a player Pedre's playing at the minute. He's playing really good. Great cross by Rafinha. Let's go, Barcelona! Let's go. Barcelona as Pedre got a goal assisted by Rafinha. Chloe, what did you think of half time? First half. First half, it was hit and miss because the defence was pushing, they, they weren't tracking back quick enough, so Getafe were getting in behind. Yes. Luckily, some of them chances were being offside, and so they got away with it. Yeah. Um, I think Rafinha he's, he needs to cross more and same with Dembele Dem for me as Dembele well Dembele as well um, but in terms of our play and our passing we're playing really well, we're passing really well we just need to get out to the wings again uh, get it to Gabby get it to Pedri get it to Busquets yeah. um, get it, even get it into Fatty as yeah. well because um, Fatty's keeping hold of that possession isn't he Gabby yeah. and Pedri's been Absolutely superb and going forward, and I think Bus gets helped massively because he's that one who's you can see he's right in between uh, Kunde and uh, Christiansen yeah. as that extra bit of solid defence. And for me, I just I think what has let Barcelona down is the wings for me, just because that is where Barcelona is losing the most possession. Yeah. Um, and uh, everyone knows I've been a bit critical on Ten Stegen, but. He's made two terrific saves in this first half. Yeah, he really has. He's, he's been fantastic. And two, two saves that he's made has been excellent. Like, coming out one-on-one -on -one with the forward. Yeah. And he's just, he's just been unstoppable. On terms of the, the wingers, they need to get in more. They need to pass more. They need to use the options that they get given. And it's the same with... It be in between in Gabby and in Pedro, you need to use the wingers and get it in because the defence of Gatabi isn't looking great. And if they can get in the box and get crossing, it's going to cause more upset in terms of goals and it's going to it's going to create more chances. So for me, in the second half, you need to they need to run the wings down, they need to cross in more. Get it into Gavi, get into Pedri, get into Fatty, and then goals will start coming. Um, yeah. Frankie De Jong substitute, maybe? Yeah, I can see it happening. I can see it coming on. Um, and I don't know who will replace, but yeah, I can see Frankie De Jong coming on. Um, but for me, Busquets is playing very well in terms of how he's, how, how he's playing, um, passing. And he's always coming, coming, going back, tracking back for the defending, tracking forward. He's always there. He's never not in an area. Absolutely, and you're spot on, Chloe. And we'll be in touch again with the full time as we give our review for that also. See you then.
versus Getafe and Barcelona wins 1-0. Chloe, what did you think of the game in general? I thought the second half was poor. Um, we we just didn't go there Like in terms of there was no passion, there was no passing forward. Um, they sloppy just, play sloppy as well. Sloppy play, um, misplaced passes, just no shooting opportunities. Like We had a couple, but they, it just wasn't faster. It just wasn't like the same in the first half. Um, they, had, they had chances to score, they had chances to get get more in front, and they didn't. And then Gattafie nearly scored. They had chances. Oh, several, I think they were probably the better team yeah. in that second half. And they were. Yeah. They were the best team in that second half, and that's the problem. They're lucky that, Barca are lucky that they didn't score. They really are. Yeah. And I think if they had scored, it would have been a different game. Mm-hmm. But the back line after Jordi Alba came on, after Eric Garcia came on, it changed. It was a lot more defensive than attackive. Yeah, I, I didn't think Alba played very well. All the balls he did play, it was yeah. very um, poor. And I would probably say that the best substitute that came on was Kese. Um, yeah. I've known Kese from watching Milan and he's played more defensive duties. But since watching him tonight, he was played in more of a... Um, uh, attacking kind of play and that's something I've not seen of Kese before. Yeah, 100% I think Kese did play excellent. He was the one that showed a lot of passion when he came on the pitch and for me the player who was still on the pitch that showed a lot of passion was the captain, Busquets. Busquets and Ten Sergen. Yeah, and Ten Sergen. He saved, he kept the team in it, Ten Sergen. <laughs> and um, for me, Busquets it was his 700th game today. Um, it was celebrated in before the game kicked off and you've probably already seen the vigil by now but Busquets is a long life play for Barcelona and he he's one of them that is very loyal mm-hmm. and he he don't care if he's playing on the bin if he's playing if he's starting if he's on the bench he doesn't care and for me that's what a captain is that's what a player is mm-hmm. and Sergio Busquets was one of the best players that played tonight mm-hmm. and yeah, absolutely. A fantastic game, and overall, we got a win. Um, fantastic first half, not so good second half. A more a broad game, surely now. Yeah, definitely. And I think, I think if you think that we always say goal difference is needed, goals are needed. Yeah. But in this Spanish league, it's a lot to say that goal difference is needed. Mm-hmm. You have another two of the best teams, Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid, in this league, and. They, they have been disappointed in this season. They have, but they they're not going to not win games that are, are, are crucial. They're not going to not score. And for me, the Barca need to start scoring more than one. And because if if that happens, they're not going to they're, they're going to keep they're going to keep losing or keep drawing. And it's yeah. not if they want to win that title again. If they want to be back in the Champions League again. They need to start scoring more goals, and that's what they need to do today in the second half. But they just didn't finish. And Pedro, Pedro and Gaffy didn't have the best second half. They were poor this second half. Yeah, I think for me was Gaffy was so good in the first half. He was so influential, and but I think that once it comes to the second half, it felt like a Tafe knew how to man map the pair of them yeah. and I think you already figured out from the ver- from probably the first minute of how to man map Dembele so once they knew how to man map them certain players it just felt like it was flat in the end. Yeah exactly 100% and I think once once the t- once Gat- Gattafi were ba- uh, back out in the second half they did two subs in, at half time Barca did two subs at half time and it just changed possession. Gattavi, they just looked a lot more stronger in the second half, and they were the, they looked like the team that were going to score until mm-hmm. Kessie came on for Barca. Uh, but before that, they didn't look like they were going to score. Mm-hmm. And for me, if if it wasn't for Sergio Busquets, if it wasn't for other players getting back and tracking back, th- this result would be a different one. Absolutely. Kessie and Busquets and Ten Stegen was probably my yeah. players who I think was the best ones. I'm not I wasn't too fond on Kunde. 
Uh, Rafinha didn't have his best game, neither did Dembele, but um, I think it was a great game to go to, just based off uh, Busquets' anniversary and to see the trophy as well, what they recently won, which was brilliant. Um, and thank you, Chloe, again for coming on to another video. No, it's been like, it's been a pleasure, Maisie. It's been a fantastic experience. Um, like you said, we've celebrated Busquets' 700th game, we've celebrated the Super Cup, and we've also celebrated Chinese New Year, which is the year of the rabbit. So, yeah, what a fantastic day. We've not just done football today, we have done basketball. Yeah. And, yeah, what a fantastic sporting day it was for us both. And, mm -hmm. yeah, thanks for having me on again, Mesa. It's a pleasure, Chloe, and thank you, everyone, who's watched, and take care. Bye-bye. See you now.